morning. This is Jeremiah J Man Monero with J Man Seminars with J Man's Ed Talks. Ed Talks. And today we're talking about Opportunity Knocks. I think this is Ed Talks number four. And Opportunity Knocks is all about door knocking. So when opportunity comes to knocking, you'll be a rocking. <laughs> Just made that up right off the bat. So to start off, if you want to subscribe to our channel, you can do so by clicking like, but also I'm going to put in the comments below. We have a messenger bot that we've created. All you have to do is click on it. It's a landing page. It'll reach out to you and we'll let you know when we're doing these ed talks and or the very popular millennia who talks uh, where we interview real estate rock stars from across the planet earth with their real inspiring stories. So. Let's get to it. Today we're talking about door knocking. And for those who don't know, before I've been in real estate now 13 years. And before I was in real estate, I door knocked and door knocked and door knocked. I still have a callus here. You can't see it maybe on my knuckle, but I have a callus here from 14, 15 years ago. I used to door knock door to door. Door knock door to door is kind of redundant, but uh, selling alarm systems for an ADT security dealer. And so I had the opportunity to knock doors, not just in Rochester, New York, but also Buffalo, Syracuse, Albany, Utica, uh, Philadelphia, Allentown, Wilkes-Barre, Jamestown, uh, and then New York City, we did all five boroughs in Nassau, Suffolk County. So I've door knocked all over. New York State and the surrounding states. So I have a little bit of experience. I would say quite literally tens of thousands of doors. Uh, now, when I got into real estate, I initially I would prospect for sale by owners and the same thing, the same kind of rules applied. I used to, if I saw a red and white sign, I was like, hello, you're gonna be a future listing of mine because I would just go and knock on the door. Uh, other agents took a more passive approach. And that's why I think a lot of people prefer the phone to door knocking. It's because it's easier for somebody to just hang up on you than it is for them to shut the door in your face. And it's easier for you to take that rejection if uh, and you knock on somebody's door and they're like, go away. You're going to take it more personally than if they just hang up on you on the phone. And, uh, and some people feel like they can get more calls per hour. Uh, for me, I found that it was it was much more effective face to face. It's harder for you to say no uh, if you know if if you have the right techniques and you know the objections and you know how to overcome those objections. Because let's face it, in any business that you're in, there's only so many objections, and when you know the answers to all of those objections, or we call them areas of concern, then there's nothing that can stop you. So when I first began, I, I used to do the for sale by owners. So let's start with the why. Why should we? Bring that up on the screen. Why should we door knock? Um, and I'm going to answer it for you, but obviously you have to answer it for yourself because if you don't believe in it, you're not going to do it. I was just speaking with a, Realtor friend of mine, he's working on a team or he's working to build his team and he was trying to take out one of his team members and the team member was like, I don't want to do this, right? Because he didn't see the value in it. Uh, if you make people do things, they're not going to be successful at it. But if you can demonstrate to them, if you're trying to train other people how to door knock, I wouldn't just give them a list of streets or a list of properties and say, hey, go door knock these. You have to go out and show them, you know, show them the way. So I like door knocking because nobody else does it. I'm not going to say nobody else, but you got to figure in my market, there's 3,000 agents. And out of those 3,000 agents, I would say maybe 1% of 1% are actually going out and knocking on doors. Uh, a good number of them are sending the expired postcards or, or mailers because that's easy. Uh, maybe then a next tier down would be people that are making the phone calls or getting you know, the expired listing phone numbers, and they're making phone calls. Again, you have to remember that these people are inundated with direct mail. They're inundated with phone calls. However, very rarely does somebody go and knock on the door. Okay. So 
Uh, where do I want to begin? Let's start with techniques. It all starts with the planning. If you're going to be door knocking, you have to map out your area first or and or get your prospects. So let's say put a list together. Put a list together. As you're watching, I want you to comment below whether uh, you're watching this live or if you're watching this on the on the repeat or on the rebroadcast and where you're from where in the United States you're from, where you're watching from, and have you door knocked in the past? Or are you going to door knock in the future after watching this? That would be good to know. So put a list together. You can door knock around a listing that you just listed. You know, if you're going to do the tell 20s, they call them tell the, the, the closest 20 neighbors. And that's a really kind of a warm approach because you're not necessarily prospecting. It's more of like, you're the paper boy. Hey, I just want to let you know I listed the Johnson's house down the street, one, two, three, anywhere street. This is a great opportunity for you to pick your neighbors. Here's a brochure on the property. We have an open house on Saturday or Sunday from two to four. Uh, and actually, we're inviting the neighbors to come from 1.30 till two o'clock. Easy, right? It's just a conversation. You give them the information, you give them the flyer, give them your card. And I never, ever want to shy away from inviting the nosy neighbor, the nosy neighbor from coming into the open house. Because number one, hey, everybody knows somebody that they might want to live in their neighborhood. This is a great opportunity for them to pick that person. Number two, um, you get to know them better, right? It's a good, you're in the people business. So why not invite them there? Um, it's an opportunity for you to build rapport, find out about their house, find out what, you know, if they're thinking about selling. And just demonstrate your expertise so that you're an expert in real estate. Okay, so that's more of like a warm and fuzzy inviting people. And that could be your open house, your broker's open, or maybe you're not even doing an open house. Just letting the neighbors know, hey, we just listed this property down the street. Some of you may be doing it right now with just listed postcards, and that's okay. Uh, maybe have your just listed postcard postcards printed and then walk them around to each individual house. How about that? Right, it's more of a more of an active approach. Take my little sip of coffee. All right, who else can we talk to? Expired listings. Expired listings. I'm going to put this up here. Expired listings. So in 2008, I made a move from one broker to another did not know that the market was going to tank the way it did. So instead of me sitting in the office going like this, phone, phone, why, why aren't you ringing? Hmm. Okay, I'm just going to wait for listings and for buyers to call me. Hmm. Nope, that's not going to happen, right? If this is your only business, this is your only source of income, like I believe in working by referral. So before you start all the door knocking or part of in conjunction with this or complementing this, you need to also take care of your clients, right? Stay in touch with them, you know, pop by and visit, do the thing, you know, the personal notes, all of that. We call that farming, working like a farmer, not as a hunter. This is the hunting side of it. Okay. So still love the ones you're with, meaning love the clients that you have, because that's going to be your best referral source. There's not people you have to prove yourself to again and again, you've already uh, proven yourself. So first, make sure that you have a good uh, client communication. We have what's called a, a, a very important client network where we do our client appreciation parties uh, once a quarter. We try to, so that's a whole other topic. It's a whole other ed talk, client appreciation parties. But 2008, I said, the phone's not ringing, business isn't there. I have to go out and make it happen. So what I did was, I figured, you know, there's there wasn't as many for sale by owners because it wasn't a hot market, right? Nobody wants to sell the house on their own. The market is slow and there's tons of inventory out there, some of which is underwater. Love coffee. So I went after expired listings. And what I did was, first thing every day, I would hop into the MLS. 
Joe Sonona here, who believes in door knocking from day one. It's been a great source of building listing inventory in our area. We use market generator reports to, to give neighbors a clear picture on what the market is bearing. I'll bring this up, Joe. And I think he's out doing a couple of appointments where he would have joined us with his door knocking techniques. But he does it. He uses uh, RPR market activity reports are fantastic. And I'm going to get into that. But first things first. I open the MLS. I find the expired listings for that day. Every single day. You have to make this a habit. This has to be a part of your daily routine. What am I going to do today to get business? I'm not going and organizing my desk. I'm not going and having coffee talk with the guys around the office. This is part of my prospect and this is part of what brings in money to my business, right? So I, I go and I find the expired listings. First thing I do with those expired listings is I cross-reference them to make sure that they haven't been already relisted. You know, sometimes an agent, my clients, we expire a listing out and then it may relist the very next day. And so it's a violation of the code of ethics for you to prospect an already listed property. So do your due diligence, make sure it's not listed, do the right thing. Um, just because you're out there prospecting and door knocking doesn't mean you have to be a jerk about it, <laughs> right? All right, so you get your list. And so I'm gonna just show you like a list that I have here. And I, I like to concentrate in a specific area because it's all about condensing time frames, being as efficient as possible, meaning, I live in a zip code 14626. So at that time, I would print out all the expired listings in 14626 for that day. Okay. And then I would do the zip code right next to it in 14612. If you want to target a specific price range, I guess you could filter it out by price range as well. But here's, I think you could see this, right? Dun, 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 dun. And actually, I might just share my screen here in a minute. So you guys can get an idea of what I'm talking about. We won't have as many expired listings to look at. I'll give me one second. I'm going to go to our... Like that. But you have a list. From that list, you should have a mapping feature in your MLS. So what you're going to do with that mapping feature is guess what? Map the properties. Right, because again, you want to be sure you're not going from this side of the town or this side of the zip code to the other side of the zip code because you're going to keep on going back to these properties. So, just like if you were setting up showings for a client, you set up your prospecting tour, if you will. I'm in here, so we're setting up our prospecting tour. And I would go whatever's closest to the office, whoever's furthest from the office, however you want to do that. Next thing I do is I print out each individual listing. So I have each one printed out. And I don't know if you can see this, but I have like a binder here. And in my binder, I have this all neatly organized. Now you can do this electronically. I would probably do this electronically if I was doing it today, but some of you... I feel like it's it, it might be better. This is don't don't ever tell anybody I said this, but it, this might be the one instance where printing it out on paper might might be better because it's easier to take notes on it and it's easier to just rip out stuff that might be listed or might not be relisting or might not have any interest or might have slammed the door in your face. Okay, so you see here I have the list of my properties, and then in order, I then three hole punch all of the listings. Each listing I have the realtor full report so I can analyze it. And then what I would also do, I don't necessarily print this out because that would be too much paper. I look at the photos, right? Because we know that sometimes it's not just why the property expired. I mean, it's not just the price on why the property expired. Sometimes it could be the remarks. It could be the photos, right? And I, I never talk bad about other agents. I always say what I can do better you know, we have a professional photographer, we have a wide angle lens, we use a home stager. Sometimes it's about positioning the property better on the market. It's not about price. We've actually listed properties at the same price that have been expired, just with new photos and better marketing, better pictures. Um, and by better pictures, I mean, uh, it's been staged professionally because it just looks better and they've sold. So proof is in the pudding. It's not always the price. So then I go through and I analyze it. 
some properties you may look at and say, you know what, this is overpriced. Maybe it is about the price. Or you look at the remarks and it might say, I'm going to find a good one here. Attention bargain hunters. In its heyday, this two-bedroom, two-bath beauty was a gem. Now it needs a little work. But when you're done, you'll have a switch. Right? I'm just reading through that randomly. So I go through and I analyze that. Now I have my plan of where I'm going. Next thing. I have an or that organized by the zip code. See, I have one zip code and here's the second zip code. I have little tabs here so I can just flip to where I am. I then create packets ahead of time. Again, this is all about efficiency and time management. So see here I have this little packet. I'd be happy to share this with you if you just comment and say, send me your materials. I'd be happy to share it with you. I don't care. If it helps somebody do more business, then I'm happy. So I have these little, and I put them, I don't know what you call these, um, paper protectors or something. You can get a hundred of them for a couple bucks. So I take it and I have all my marketing materials in here. Now, typically you carry like, um, Ribbon, like you would use when wrapping a present, or even zip ties. Zip ties can be a little bit more expensive, but ribbons cheap and easy. Cheap, cheap and easy. My accent comes out sometimes. So here's what I have. I have a guarantee that we offer, right? And it says a guarantee of what what we're guaranteeing to do in the transaction. I have recent successes. So I have homes sold by the Monero team. You know, and, and this is, again, this is where I live. So my marketing says, and this is about specializing in your niche, but it says, we live in Greece, we work in Greece, we sell in Greece. And then we have all of our recent sales in the area. Okay, this is the one time that bragging does help. Uh, this isn't something that I would post on social media because I don't believe in saying, hey, I sold another property, I'm so important. But here is where, you know, it's double-sided. It's, you know, you have all your information on the bottom and your branding. And then I have two other pieces that I include in this package. And again, I put it in here in case it's raining, whatever. Now, usually we'll hang it right on the doorknob. You don't want to put stuff in the mailbox because that's against the law. It's a federal crime. So my letter says, uh, dear homeowner, I stopped by today because I noticed your property was recently on the market and did not sell. And what I'll do is I'll take a picture of this. I'd be happy to take a picture and post it in the comments below if it's something you're interested in seeing. So I'm not seeing any comments so far. But if you have any questions or comments as I go, I try to look periodically, but sometimes I get into the flow and I forget. So just type your comments below and, and we'll help you out. All right, so uh, I stopped by today because I noticed your property was recently in the market and did not sell. I won't suggest that you reduce your price or keep your home on the market longer, but rather I believe you should reposition your property with professional staging and high quality wide angle photos photos to sell it faster and for more money big caps man because big caps means i'm serious i've enclosed a flyer with 10 great reasons to hire a staging professional and photos of my listings that show before and after using a wide angle lens camera uh, for a free hour with a professional stager for all my listings and use the widest angle camera available to provide the best possible service to my clients etc cetera, etc cetera. you get the idea what do i do differently so how do you set yourself apart from the competition if their house didn't sell, what's the reason in their head and how can I address that without us even having a conversation yet? So in their head, they might think, man, we didn't like the pictures, man, it, all the all that stuff. And then I have 10 reasons why to hire a staging professional. Um, if you don't know, staging actually provides the greatest return on your investment. Meaning if you invest, it's a 318, almost 318. 319% return on investment. So if a homeowner invests $150 on a stager, he would get $500 back in their sale price. And I would venture to say that it would cause the property to sell when it wouldn't have sold if they didn't. Because we've all been to those houses that are cluttered and just too much stuff and the colors are wrong. It's amazing what a stager can do. Uh, so my advice to you, if you're gonna be door knocking, partner with a stager because that will help you uh, if we're talking about expired listings that will help you to uh, reposition the property on the market then I also have printed photos before and after I show 
the same property before. You probably can't see that before. Then after, so it shows the difference of a wide angle lens. Before, after, oh, before, after. Seeing is believing. That's what you have to think about marketing. You can't just say this would be better. Show them why it's better. You have to show them because this is all stuff that you're leaving behind. It will not be doing the talking for you. So this is if they don't answer the door. And then I even had this on the other side when QR codes were a thing. And this takes them to a video that I created. But you could also, you know, take it one step further. Do a video about why you specialize in expired listings or why they should hire you or why your team is better or why your office is better or why you sell more in the neighborhood or why you're knocking on their door. Anything you could do a video on. And so if it was expired listing, you could say www, no, not www. I would say expired.moneroteam.com. That could be the URL. And that could forward to a video on why they should hire me. Uh, it's always a problem getting these things back in there. Okay. So that's our leave behind. But as I go through my list, I write something for every single property. So if I don't talk to a person, I'm going to write, did not speak to a person, come back. Even though I leave it behind, I'm still going to, I want to talk face to face with every single person that's a prospect. So if they don't answer or the babysitter's there or the grandma's there or somebody's there, I would say, you know, who's, who's the person I should be talking to? When should I come back? And then I'll put that on my list of properties because I'm going to make sure that I hit every single one. If somebody says, Hey, I shouldn't do that on video. Go fly a kite. Then now I might cross them off and say, well, are you still interested in selling the house? Yeah. Door knocking is all about asking open, open-ended questions. So let's talk about technique. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Have a little cup more cup of coffee. So you go up to the door. I'm going to try to adjust my camera here. I'm going to pretend I'm going to knock on my window. Can you see that? All right. So here I am. Here I am. Here I am. So I knock on the door. When I'm knocking on the door, a couple things. Let's talk about attire. You can see I'm dressed in a polo shirt and, sh and, uh, and pants. <laughs> I suggest you wear pants. But it's good to have a more business casual attire than a suit. I know that somewhere along the line, your manager, somebody told you that you, you know, you need to be professionally dressed. And I agree with that. This is still professional, right? But if you go to the door with your briefcase and a shirt and a tie and just decked out, they're gonna look through the window and they're immediately gonna see what? A salesperson. Nobody likes salespeople. Okay, so I would knock on the door, casual attire. Once I knock on the door, I don't look at the door. What I mean by that is I'm going to look down the street. I'm not paying attention at all to what's going on at the door because you might have somebody come to the window and go, No, thank you. Not interested. I don't want to see that. Right? I want them to uh, – well, Kim, that's that's a good point, I guess. Um, Kim Zweiner says pants even for the ladies. No dress, skirt, anything anything that's like business casual. I'm not saying you have to wear like a, a woman's suit in the middle of summer. As long as you're comfortable, I think, um, I think shorts would also be okay. The point that I'm trying to make is like don't try to be super professional – and look like a salesperson because you'll look like a salesperson and they will not answer the door. So you won't even you won't even get to the point of talking to the homeowner. So I knock on the door, I'll look down the street, and they might even like knock on the window back at me. I'm not paying attention. I have to wait for them to come to the door. 
Okay, they come to the door. Oh, hi, how you doing? Hey, my name is Jeremiah. It's Jamie Manero. I'm with the Monero team at XYZ Realty. You know, I saw your house was on the market and should have sold but didn't. I'm not sure it'll meet the needs of the discerning buyers that I'm working with right now. But I saw it. Let's see here. You know, why do you, why do you think it didn't sell? I mean, it seemed like it was priced right. I'm just asking open-ended questions. I want to see what they feel, why they feel the house didn't sell, and then I'm going to shut up. Try that. Okay. Uh, I partnered up with a, a a colleague of mine at one point. He's more of a traditional salesperson, and we'd knock on the door. He'd go, and he'd be like. Hi, how you doing? My name is John John and I've been in the business 40 years and I'm a top agent here and I believe it's down the internet and he would just keep going and he came from the school of sales where you kept talking until they surrendered and I I believe in just the opposite. Now it's it's more about being interested than being interesting. So asking open-ended questions, why do you feel the house didn't sell? You feel that? That silence, that awkwardness is going to make them talk. He who talks first loses in sales. So they'll say, well, you know, that they might say that agent. This, the, 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 the. Okay, what was it about the agent that you didn't like? Oh, well, they didn't do this. They didn't do an open. So now you're getting all their hot buttons of why they felt the house and so Or they could just say, well, you know, we were overpriced from the beginning. I don't think I'll ever say that. But... <laughs> They'll say, well, we weren't getting any showings. Well, if it's right now, if we're talking a seller's market, I would say, well, you know, in this market, it's, it's, it's hard to believe that there wouldn't be any showings. We're having multiple offers depending on your price range and, and area, but there's still a right price for every property. So it's critical that we don't overprice it from the beginning. You know, if, if I was selling this fidget spinner that I have here and I was selling this and I bought it for a dollar, you know that it sells for a dollar at every store in town. But I went and I went online. I said, you know what? I have this special fidget spinner. It's better than everybody else's. You don't know why it's better, but we're going to sell this for a dollar fifty. Would you be willing to pay that? No, of course not. Market value is market value. But the key is asking open-ended questions and then trying to get in the house. I don't care what the reason is, right? They might say, oh, you know, it was just the time of year. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I understand exactly how you feel. Many of my happiest clients felt the same way. You know, what they found out was that listing with the Monero team at XYZ Realty, we get the property. Can, can, can I come in? And I'll, you start wiping your feet. You start wiping your feet. It's just a, a subconscious thing where they're going to open the door for you to come in. Okay. No matter, like, don't pitch at the door. Don't do your presentation right at the door because then. It's too easy for them to get out of that conversation. My goal is to get in the door, get in as soon as possible, and then continue to build rapport, find out what their hot buttons are and how I can help them. So once I would get in the door, I would say, okay, well, why don't you give me a tour as if you're you know, the real estate agent and tell me why you decided to buy this home? You know, What were the things you loved about it? Because these are the hot buttons. These are the things that you want to know about. When you're when you're selling or marketing something so then as they go through the house and i'm listening but i'm also looking around scanning the room looking at pictures looking at I, i'm trying to find ways to build rapport because that is your number one goal your number one goal in door knocking is building rapport if you get them to like you you have won period okay i don't care how much you sell i don't care about your market share i don't care about your years in the business and none of that matters if they don't like you, you're not going to win the business. Okay? So some of you who go to the door and you're like, hey, I'm the best. And you're wondering why you're not getting in. It's because uh, your name is Richard Noggin. Okay? If you can understand what that means. Short for Richard. All right. Uh, we're in there. We're building rapport. Figuring out. Now, keep in mind, if I feel, if I feel that I can't help these people, if I feel like, Maybe they don't have the equity to sell. I feel like they're just not realistic in their pricing. I might schedule a second visit. You know, if they don't have the equity and they're not interested in doing a short sale, which I would refer that out to somebody in my office specializing in short sales because I don't like that. But if if they need to be re-educated on the market, the pricing, that kind of stuff, I'd say, you know what? 
I've got a lot of good information here. I'm not sure yet if I can help you. Let me go back to the office, go over the numbers, and see if, see if there's something that we can do to, to help you out. You know, I'd rather turn you down now than let, than let you down later. And you know, they'll, they'll respect that because you're being honest. And, and honesty, honesty is the best policy, let's face it. So I will then go back to the office. Make sure that you ask them while you're at the house. You're going to ask them, what were the improvements that were done to the house? How much did they cost? And when were they done? Because then I'm going to plug that information into uh, my realtor property resource, RPR, to do a seller's report. Okay. And if you tuned in last week, we did RPR, but we're probably going to do another uh, broadcast on it soon. It is the best way to educate clients on, on the market realities. What's the market doing? You know, how to price this property property properly, right? To get it sold. Because I think that's another problem.